happen. That's all they did. Y'all remember the Greens that were here? Homecoming? He wrote that one. Oh, Tim Green's a great songwriter. Amen? Going to be back with us next homecoming. I already booked it. Amen? So that will be good. Luke chapter number 17. We start talking this morning about being a servant of the Lord. Then in verse 7, a servant must be subject to their master. Then verse 8, a servant must serve their master. Now let's look at verse 9. Verse number 9. Y'all say amen real good. You might see a miracle tonight. Ooh, listen to the shouting going on. Bunch of backslidden Baptists. That's all I'll say. <laughs> number 3. Servants should not expect the spotlight from their master. Verse 9 says, And he doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. We should have no special claims or expectation of recompense for obedience. Obedience is simply expected. You're expected to obey the voice of the Lord. You're, you're expected to obey the commandments in the Word of God without special recognition or recompense. And that's a problem in the church today. Obedience is out of respect of what we owe Him. We owe Him everything. We could have never saved ourselves from hell. The only limit there should be in our service is His Master's will. To serve Him and to obey Him out of love for all He's done for me and you. There's no point when we should say, it's now time to cease and let God thank me. I'm waiting for God to applaud me. No, we should do it just because we simply owe Him, and if He doesn't say thank you, that's okay. But aren't you glad He does say thank you? He does say thank you. He does bless us in many ways. Not, not maybe the way we want it, but He never goes without being thankful. But we shouldn't expect that thanks. And we shouldn't get upset because God doesn't do everything just the way we want Him to do it. Well, what should He praise us for? Doing what we're told? There should be no praise in doing what we're told. But there's praise. I believe with all my heart there's praise when you go beyond what you're told in obedience. When you go to that point of sacrifice. Amen? Willing to go the extra mile for God without being asked. Willing to go that extra block or that extra step or that extra effort. I think God appreciates that, don't you? We need more servants of this extra effort just because we love Him. To say thank you to Him for what He did for us. The servant is always a debtor of service. And the Master is never a debtor of reward. And those who serve out of duty will be satisfied when the duty is finished and expect praise of others when the duty is done, not now. You know, you're never going to be appreciated like you should now. People are people. People are accidents looking for a place to happen. You ever heard that? And, and we are. We're, we're never grateful as we should, but we can't. We're fallible creatures. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. We can't keep up with it all. I wish I could. Every Saturday night I'm sitting through and beg to try to go to sleep, but things come to mind I wish I had done. I forgot this. I forgot that. I forgot the other. Because we're, we're incapable of being perfect. But when the opportunities come, and they do come to our mind to make that extra effort for God, then we ought to take advantage of it. Applause or no applause. Amen? Oh, listen to me. Servants have no job description. Their work is never done. They're, and, and never expect or expect it to be done or praise for it being done. Folks, you know what's going to happen to me tomorrow morning? My day is going to start out just like every Monday. i got another week to work. 
More people to pray for. More people to check on. Cards to send. Messages to make. I got to go in the morning and be a coupon queen. That's what they call us folks who go out on coupon day. Tomorrow's double coupons in Harris Teeter in Greensboro. Me and Queen Dean and Queen Wendy, we're going to be there. Say amen. With our coupon crowns on, because them kids has got to eat at camp. Amen. And we want to feed them cheap, not expensive. We want to feed them cheap. We want to feed them good food that don't cost us a lot. And uh, we can do it with a coupon. Say amen. Got to do it in the morning. Got to get up and go. I was walking to the car after church, and my right knee just said, I ain't going to work no more. I was lucky I sat my brown bomber. I'd have went down. I got in the car. And I said, "Okay, we got to make this thing work somehow, some way." So I tried to stay off it as much as I could. I got up here a minute ago, got to preaching, and all of a sudden it said again, "I ain't gonna work." <laughs> That's just the way it happens. But uh, work goes on. Say amen. Some of y'all look like y'all swallow persimmons where y'all come. Y'all all right? Okay. I got a smile. I'll never get a smile at Steve Rains. He'll be dead, and I'm gonna take my fingers and push his. I'm gonna push a smile up on his face one day. Amen. Always got that serious look. That's that trusty look. Amen. Got that serious look. But folks, we have got to learn. The business has got whether you feel like it, or whether they appreciate it, or whether they're. If people aren't appreciative, don't worry about people. God appreciates it. And you'll be rewarded at the end of the day when our work is completely done. And when you get to the millennium, you'll be so glad you persevered on and you were faithful regardless of no applause, regardless of people not being thankful. God's love was enough. Amen? You know, if you stop and think about this thing, God may be testing you to see if His love's enough. I mean, I, I had something happen to me three weeks ago. I've never been so humiliated in my life. And I didn't know what to do but stand there and look like a dumb monkey. Because that's all I could do. I didn't do anything to cause it. I couldn't make it go away. I just stood there and went right along. And you know what the devil whispered in my ear? <laughs> they laughing at you. They making fun of you. I thought, the devil's saying that in my left ear. What's God going to say in my right ear? God said, you're all right. Don't you worry about what people think. They're not the one who's going to determine where you serve in the millennium. It's going to be me. So I just stood there and smiled. Why? Because it's not for the applause. It's not for the accolades of men. It's not even for your own gratification. Just be faithful. Just stick to the task. And when the setting of the sun comes, what a day, glorious day that will be. Amen? The Lord Jesus, no doubt here, was trying to counteract the poison of self-righteousness that was welling up in the lives of his disciples. We become self-righteous when we, are, when we start comparing ourselves with a physical mirror instead of a spiritual mirror, the Word of God. We start comparing ourselves to other people. You're not other people. You are you. You are a special creature made of God who's only got a ministry that only you can do. Hey, as things, it's like Julia said last Sunday night. I couldn't wire that. I can go in there and turn it on and operate it a little bit, but I can't run it. I can't put it together. I can make a mess of things. I can break something. But, hey, he can't wax an elephant like I can. Though. Y'all will get that next week. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 says, Then answered Peter, who was a disciple, and said unto him, Jesus, Behold, we have forsaken all. Hey, Lord, look what we've done for you. We followed thee. What shall we have therefore? 
And Jesus said unto them, and that's odd. One person spoke and he answered them all. Because every one of them was thinking the same thing. Every one of them had the same attitude. Attitude can get you in trouble. He said, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Period. That is not until the end. That is not until after the rapture takes place. Until then, there's going to be some tough roads. It was going to be some tough times. It's going to be some suffering. Every one of them died a martyr's death. Did they not? Hey, he said, not till then. Verse 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive what? I like them kind of dividends, don't y'all? A hundredfold. Not now, but in the life to come. Don't seek your reward now. Seek your work now. The reward will come. Your life may be 60. If you're blessed, 70. If you rob the devil of 10 or 20 years, 80 or 90. Hey, live those years your best, serving God your best. Because the millennium is going to be how many times? 10 times longer. And then you're going to live forever after that. Say amen. Thank God. He said, but many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. A lot of folks on earth that's got the horns blowed for them, and people bow down to them and treat them like kings and queens. When they're going to get to heaven, God's going to say, who? Who? I don't know. Depart from me into what? Everlasting judgment. A lot of these big wigs who think they're something, you're going to find out. Hey, the last shall be first. Hey, folks, we've got to be servant. Don't be ashamed of being a servant. Be bold and be proud of bearing the mark of Christ. His servant, his servant forever. While rewards are promised to us, we do not labor for our Lord simply to receive recompense. We owe him for his love to us, and he gave us everything. And we should return the favor with no questions asked. Serve him unconditionally as the one who has every right to humble our obedient service. He is under no obligation to thank you for your service or mine. We should expect nothing. Everlasting life should be enough for me and you. And it is for me. I'll never forget when I was seven years old was my first experience with death. I told you before, my Uncle Bobby died. Forty-two years old. That's young. Dropped dead of a heart attack, 42. And I'll never forget standing in Brooks Funeral Home in South Boston, looking over in that green casket, trying to talk to Bobby. But at seven years old, I didn't understand Bobby wasn't going to talk back to me anymore. He was dead. But you know what God put in my mind at seven years old? That was a horrible thing for somebody to die. And you know, that's when God started working on my heart to be a preacher. Because I went to church the following week, and you know what the preacher's message was? One and one will what? And I hated death so bad. I wanted to do everything I could to make sure everybody lived forever. I want to make sure everybody I knew knew Jesus. Sometimes I wish I still had that fire I had when I was a kid. I'd witness to a stick if it wiggled. We need that kind of fire, amen? Oh, listen to me. Heaven's going to be great. Everlasting life's going to be wonderful. Yet there's going to be so much more. We start expecting it, we have to become sinfully and self-righteous. We need His grace to live as humble servants of God. We will ask no reward except to serve Him more and serve Him faithful. Number four, verse 10. Servants are not self-sustaining without their master. All these other three points have brought us to this point. You see, if you get self-righteous and you start thinking you can live without your master, 
Try living with our God just a little bit and find out how quick you can make it without Him. Larry Tickle used to sing it well. I can't even walk. What? Without Him holding to my hand. Hey, you cannot live without the master. Verse 10. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which we have commanded ye, say we are unprofitable servants, and we have done that which was our duty to do. Without him, we're impotent. We're powerless. We can't even serve him without his power and his presence of the Holy Spirit. An unpretending humility is demanded of me and you. We can't pretend humility. It's got to be real. A real humility. A humility that's willing to be embarrassed for God. A humility that's willing to be overworked for God. Underappreciated for God. Without even worrying about it or being upset about it. Folks, they needed Jesus more than he needed them. But thank God he needs us. And he wants us. Camp's not going to happen next week without Ken Bickerman. It's not going to happen without Hicks 1 and Hicks 2 back down. Mom and Daddy Hicks. Ain't going to happen. And it really ain't going to happen with our Queen Dean up here. I'll tell you that. Amen. Her kitchen posse. You want to see a bunch of workers now, come meet the kitchen posse. Amen. She got the greatest sheriff in the world over here. Sheriff Reed. Amen, Sheriff. He's the high potentate of the kitchen. If she says, you're, you're out of there. You're gone. You won't last. There's a dictatorship in that kitchen. Has to be to feed all those kids. Amen. And a lot of you will be there next week. Wouldn't happen without you. Everybody's got their job. Everybody's got their position. Everybody's got their responsibility. Mine's in the morning at 8 o'clock. Greensboro, North Carolina. Harris Teeter. Crown on, coupons in hand. That's my job. I'm going to do it. I'll be a queen for a day. If it'll bring a teenager to Jesus. Amen. If it'll bring a teenager, a young child to Jesus. I, I'll put on my coupon crown and I'll march up there and I'll buy them groceries and I'll... Man, we, we got it down pat. We use cell phones, man. I send them all out over the store and we're concentrating back and forth with the cell phone. We get the job done. They see me and my squad, squad come in. They start calling extra cashiers. They know we're going to get the job done. And we're going to leave that with a bucket load full of groceries. Because those kids deserve to hear about Jesus. And look, if their bellies are full, they'll sit still long enough for you to tell them about Jesus. Amen? They'll hear the story of how to get to glory. The disciples were very unaware that it was not them doing the work. It was Him through them. Folks, it's not. I hope you don't ever think it's you. I was talking to Brother Ronnie back here before church. He used to speak a whole lot in days gone by. And he said, you used to sit on the front row and sweat and pray. And sweat and pray. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. He said, my knees would knock and my liver would quiver and I was shaking all over. And then the preacher would call my name and I'd stop it. He said, just flow like water. Why? Because it won't run him. He'd done prayed and asked God to help him. And the Holy Spirit overcome him. Say amen back there, Ronnie. I know you can hear me. you got the thing in your ear. Amen. I know you can hear me now. Hey, that's what happens when you let God do it through you. It's not me. It's not you. It's Him. And we need Him. Oh, we need Him. Even after flawless efforts and accomplishment, we know that we're nothing without Him. We know we need Him. When a slave or servant died in the Old Testament days, he died a slave and was st still given no honor after years of faithful service. God expects every servant to do his duty in the union of mind and purpose with his will. Accolades or no accolades makes absolutely no difference because reward comes on the other side. You see, in view of all that's been done for me and you on the cross, 
and all this laid in storage. Boy, I can't imagine thinking about how good heaven's going to be. Can you all imagine eating without swelling up? I've never had that experience. Can you ever imagine getting up and not having to worry about having something to do? I mean, we worry about getting things done because we might not get them done. But when God's on the throne, we're going to get them to have things to do, but they're going to get done. No worries. No sickness. My wife's doctor told her the last time she was at the doctor, Wendy made a statement. And it was profound. She, she said, Doctor, my body is at war with me. And that doctor said, You're exactly right, Miss Hanson. Your body is fighting against you. And you've got to fight back to win. That's a what health's a war, is it not? Health's a war that's hard on some of us. Some of us got different diseases than others, but all of us got something wrong with us. If you ain't got nothing physically wrong with you, you might be ugly. Come on now. I mean something wrong with all of us. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. Listen, to the world, the world they think we're slaves to religion. But we know we're not slaves to religion. We're princes and princesses of the king. And he's got duties for us to do and accomplish. And as long as we'll do those duties and accomplish them, one day we're going to arrive in heaven, receive our inheritance, we're going to be blessed in God. But until the, the sweet by and by, we've got to determine we're going to make it through that nasty now. I don't care how nasty it gets, how rough it gets, I'm determined to be faithful. Aren't you? I'm a son working out of a heart of love, not a stone cold duty. I'm going to be here whether you're here or not. I'm going to be here whether the air conditioning is working or not. Thank God it's working. Say amen. But I'm going to be here. I'm going to be there with my coupon crown on the mark. On, dutiful. On time. Why? Because when I was a kid, I went to youth camp. Under old tent, old service tent. Still see it now. His back was cutting him in two. He had a horrible back problem. But on a Coleman stove, not a nice kitchen like we got, but on a Coleman stove with a sink that I had a pipe what run 50, 75 feet out into a creek. I went under the tent one day to check on Jim and couldn't see him. He was there laying on the ground. This young kid that scared me to death. I went over, you all right, Jim? Oh, he said, I'm fine. My back's just bothering me. I needed a break for a minute. I'll be all right. About 20 minutes, he got up and finished supper. Fed all us kids. And then when the preaching time come, he sat on the back row and Amen to preacher. When it's all done, him and his crew go back in the kitchen and wash the dishes. If Jim Lloyd can do it, I can do it too. You can probably never heard the name Jim Lloyd till tonight. You may never hear it again till you get to heaven. But in heaven... Jim Lloyd was a pest on earth. My wife would see his phone number ring up on the phone. She'd say, oh, no, it's Jim. <laughs> he was a pet boy. He worried me to death for years. But I loved him. As he first loved me, I wouldn't dare not answer that phone. 
He said, Brother Walter, I've got to go get a prescription. Can you take me? He said, Brother Walter, I need something to eat. My wife's working. Can you come go take me get me something to eat? I'd get in my car and I'd go get it. And he'd limp in and limp out wherever he had to go. He'd come back to the car and he'd say, I'm sorry I got to bother you, Brother Walter. I said, Jim, you didn't bother me. It was my honor and my privilege because I wouldn't be the man of God I am today if it weren't for people like you when I was a kid who cared enough to take time to come and take a week of their life and work at the old camp. I said, no, sir, it's my honor and it's my privilege. Jim Long comes down every year, does he not, Ken? Works with our kids. Do you know who run camp when I was a kid? Jim Long. I don't worry about Jim Long. He'd come do anything he wants to because I know what he did for me. And he'll do the same thing for our kids. Say amen. Let me tell you something. Yeah, we spend a pretty penny on camp. I try to keep it down as tight as I can. But our kids are worth so much more. So much more. So much more. Knowing who we were and who He is and what He's done, we owe Him. We owe Him. I want to serve Him in humility, knowing my reward is not here. It's not now. It's not in this life. What people say about me doesn't matter. What people think of me doesn't matter. What people do to me doesn't matter. What God says to me does matter. What God thinks of me matters to me. And what God does for me and through, does for others through me does matter. And tonight, I want you to desire to matter. That's my prayer. If we're thankful for the past, we'll work in the future. Amen? We'll work in the present. And we'll go that extra mile. And when we get hurt, or when we get humiliated, or when we get dishonored and disrespected, are forgotten or overlooked or people are ungrateful to us we need to stop and remember it doesn't matter what people do it matters what God knows and God loves me more than anybody else in the world I don't know about you but I'm thankful to be whether you call it a slave or a servant I don't care I'm his slave. That's what I need to be for him. And we got a desire to give it all. Stand to your feet. Heads about.